This is the 2014 higher level question B2 looking at axonometric projection. Uh, the figure shows an incomplete trimetric projection using the axonometric axis method of a model of a basketball backboard based on the 3D graphic on the right. The elevation and end view are shown in their, their required positions. Draw the axonometric axis X, Y, and Z and the scalene triangle ABC. Part B, draw the elevation and end view orientated as shown and complete the trimetric projection. Final part to this question, draw the axonometric projection of a basketball in contact with the backboard at the point P, the radius of the ball is 12 millimeters. To set up with this question, we're, go uh, we're going to start with the axis, the X, Y, and Z axis, and we're going to draw the Y axis first. So one of the axes always in these questions is given as vertical. So we're going to position uh, that axis in the center of the page. We don't need a whole pile of space down at the bottom because we have an, in, an elevation and an end view. Um, so we don't need space for a plan. But we do need space for the trimetric view. So we'll give it a bit of space. So put in the y-axis, so that's a vertical line. Pick a point for the center. And then using our protractor, we're going to measure the 110 degrees first. So in trimetric projection, all of the angles forming the crow's foot are different. In diametric, two of them will be the same. And in isometric, uh, all of them are the same, they're all 60. So this gives me the y-axis, and this is the z-axis coming down along this way. What I need to locate now is the angle that this is inclined at here. So it's not going to be 110 because we're told that it's trimetric projection, so all angles are different. So we need to find it in a different way. What we need to find is the point that is 50 millimeters out. So if we look at the question, point A is fit located 50 millimeters from the vertical uh, axis Y. So this is point A here. And point B is 90 millimeters away from that and it's horizontal to it. So from here we can draw a line out parallel, out horizontal measure the 40 millimeters or the, the 90 millimeters from here, 40 millimeters from the y-axis and that gives me point B. Point B now joins back to the center point that we used first where we measured our angle of 110 and that gives me uh, the x-axis. So just recap on that again Draw your vertical axis first, measure the angle of 110 degrees here, locate point A which is out 50 millimeters from the y axis and point B is 90 millimeters horizontal from A. Now, to find, uh, to complete the scalene triangle, each of our lines here are perpendicular to the axis. So the line AB is perpendicular to the axis Y. The line joining B to C is going to be perpendicular to A, uh, the Z axis. So let's do that one now. Gives me point C. Which then if we test is perpendicular to the line coming from X. So perpendicular 
to this one. So here is perpendicular. The line AC is perpendicular to the x-axis and the line uh, BC is perpendicular to the z-axis. So that completes part A of this question to draw the axon metric axis and the scalene triangle ABC. Next part of this now is we're going to draw the elevation and end view orientated as shown and then we'll look at drawing the 3D view of it. So I'm going to start by um, doing part D elevation. So you'll need sliding set squares for this or an adjustable set square. Uh, that's up to you. So we're going to extend the line Z out along here somewhere. So just we'll move it out far enough so that it's not going to be intersecting. And we'll draw a line uh, perpendicular to that out along here. What we also need to take out are the points B and C. So they're going to help us form our semicircle that we need. So we'll project these out long until they intersect with that horizontal or that uh, perpendicular line that we've drawn. So that gives me a point here and here. What I need to draw now is a semicircle. So next we're going to draw the semicircle, and that semicircle is drawn along this line here. So from essentially point C down to what would be point B. I need to find the center of this line, so I bisect it. So extending over halfway, swinging two arcs that intersect each other. Arcs must be the same size. That's the center. From here, I need to draw a semicircle. Let's check it touches both places. And that semicircle cuts the z axis here. So that's going to be the corner of my 90 degree bend that I'm going to draw. So from this point down to uh, the z axis and out along this way. That gives me the axis of where my elevation is going to sit. Now in this, they don't give us a full width of this question. So how far is the full width of the backboard going from here across? But if you look closely at the center point, you have a blue axis in the elevation. There's a blue axis running uh, through point P coming down onto the ground. Following that point down, it touches here. So it touches it at um, what would be point B. So this distance here is halfway along it, so we'd be doubling it. So from here to here is halfway, so if we double that, that's going to give me the full width that I'm looking for of the backboard. So taking that distance, that's going to give me the full width of the base of it. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to draw in the rest of the backboard. And we're given a few heights. We're given up a height of 10 millimeters and a height of 40. So let's mark those now. And again, let's locate each of those points on both sides. So you can measure them up or use your sliding set squares to find the height and mark it up on the opposite side. So we can mark in a few pieces here now. Uh, also need to mark there's a width of 40, that width of 40, so 20 on either side of that central point. Uh, is going to give us the sloping pieces at the base. So I can mark that in now. Dark up the side here, height of 40. Same going on the opposite side. Now that arc, we're not given the height for it, we're not given the radius for it, but we are given a start point and we also have an end point for that arc. The start point is this central point that we used earlier, and the radius of it is going to be the distance from here 
to one of the points that we've marked there that's high, uh, up 40 millimeters from the other one. So just check that they line up. And that's how we get the radius for that part of it. So point for a compass on this point up to this corner or this corner, they're both the same, so it doesn't make any difference. So I'm marking the central axis. Uh, the blue line just make that a little bit clearer. We're going to need that in a moment to get the height of um, the elevation. So the final part that needs to be done now inside in this is just to mark the width of that uh, square in the center of it. So again, just using sliding set squares, it's formed in this grid here. And after this darkened in, we'll locate point P as well. We'll need that in part uh, C, this question, uh, but there's no harm in finding it now. So point P is located, it's at the center of this little square. So joining the diagonals, we'll look at that. So that's our elevation complete. What we're going to do now is look at the end view. The end view is just a single line, but again, we need to set up the same construction. So we're going to be coming out here uh, perpendicular to the X axis. Distance out here isn't as important. It's we need to bring our X axis out and point A and point B also, or A and C. Again, we're going to bisect this and draw a semicircle. So again, bisect this line, this distance, and we're going to draw a semicircle around that. So from the bisector down to each side, check that it lines up correctly. And draw in the semicircle. point where the semicircle crosses the axis, the x-axis in this case, that's the point that we need on our um, end view of our axis. So that's going to give me my 90 degree angle. And in here, it's just an edge view of our object. So we'll mark up the 10 and the 40 so that 10 and 40 will mark up those heights on it so that they're clear. We'll need them in a while. And then we also need to mark the overall height of the object. Now we're not given a measurement for that, but we can see it over here in the elevation. So we're going to measure the height. So from the bottom point all the way up to the very top along the axis, that's going to give me the very the top height of this object. And I can mark that distance then down over here. So this is the height, the top height, this is the 40, and this bit down here is the 10. So that completes the end view. And next we need to find this object down here in uh, the elevation. So we're going to project all our points down, our lines down, um, and that will give us our 3D view of it. So taking each of our points, so we can take take one line at a time. I think that works best. Projecting this one down until it touches the y-axis because it's going to be sitting in here in this space. And this line down also. So you could take it this way as well if you wanted. We'll give you the same point. There's the 10, there's the 40, they're lining up. So just project those lines down across. We're going to need them in a minute to find uh, the square in the middle. 
So I get this point, this line here on the side. Now let's find this point down here. That point is on the ground, so it'll be down here. So it's going to be along the x-axis somewhere. So let's take this line and project that line back down also. That gives me this point. That one can join to here. Now I'm doing these one line at a time. You can do a couple of them uh, in one go, just be careful that you don't get mixed up with your lines. In a question that looks like this, it's not as big a deal as some of the other ones that we've encountered. Final part of this uh, now is this top corner, which needs to be projected down the same way as all the rest of them. So that's projected down until it intersects that top line, giving me that point, which is a vertical line up to here. So that completes that front part of it. Now we're going to put in uh, the central box. So that's found in uh, much the same way. So it's going to be directly above here. So as we already have these points, I'm just going to draw two vertical lines from here and here, and that will give me the correct position for them. So the corners of the square are directly above these two bottom points, and we already have the horizontal lines, these lines that they sit on, so we can just project straight up. and then this gives us the box. Locating point P is done the same way that it was in the elevation. Join the diagonals. And this point here in the center is point P. final part of this now is to locate a number of points on the curve up here. So we can pick random points, um, but we'll take ones that we can work out the height of. So what I'm going to do is, this is almost 30, so I'm going to mark off up 10 millimeters and up 20 millimeters. So if I do that and then take lines out to either side, that gives me a number of points on the curve. So I've got one, two, three, the top point is four, five, six, and seven. So point two is 10 millimeters vertically above point one, point three is 10 millimeters vertically above point two. The points on this side are the exact same. So we can then uh, just locate these over here. So we're measuring up from the 40 because that's 0.7 and 0.1. Up 10 millimeters above that is going to be 0.6 and 0.2. 10 millimeters above that is 0.5 and 0.3. Very top then is 0.4. So all I've done is I've picked random points, that, but these are taken based on height. So this point here is 10 millimeters above the line joining 1 to 7. Point 3 is 20 millimeters above the line joining 1 to 7. You can use whatever way you like. You can use 60, 30 degrees at square. But it's handy with this because we only have the same number of points up here and the same heights can be used to transfer them down. So if I'm to take point 2, that needs to be projected down from the elevation and the end view. So let's do the end view first. So point two, which is also the line for six. So it's going to be somewhere along that line. Where along that line? So it projects that point down just like we did for all the other points. Two comes down until it intersects that line. That's point two. Point six is done the same way. It's on the same line, so let's do it now. This is point six. Point eight. Point 
and 5 and 0.3 done the same way. So projecting that down, there's 0 0.3, 0 0.5, same idea. 0.4 needs to come down as well. And the height from 4 is brought from our end view. So where both lines intersect each other is going to give me the point, point 0.4. And that's point 0.4 here. So once we have all our points and they're all labeled, we're going to draw the best curve that we can that's going to join all of these. And there we have uh, the trimetric projection of um, the backboard. So the final part of this is to draw the axonometric projection of a basketball in contact with the backboard at point P. So we've located point P in the elevation and the trimetric view need to locate it up here so that this is an edge view of the board so this is the only place I can see where it's actually going to be in contact with it so I can just project this back up so I can just project this back this way so this here is point P the center for this uh, basketball is going to be 12 millimeters out from point P so perpendicular to it so the backboard is a tangent, so the normal, which is perpendicular to it, is going to be out 12 millimeters from that. So we can measure 12 millimeters. And we can draw in the basketball. So there's the basketball in the end view. What needs to happen now is we need to locate the center point of this down here. So it's going to be on a line coming from uh, point P out here in the elevation. They're in line with each other, so just project that line out line here. So somewhere along that line, that's a line coming out from P. Find the center, project that down. And this point here is the center of the circuit. So that blue point there is the same as the blue point here. So all it's done is this has been projected down along here, so it's coming out from P. The center is the 12 millimeters. That gives us the center of it down here. Now, if we're to measure the heights and distances of everything here, they are smaller here than they are in the two uh, views here, because that's what axonometric projection is giving us. It's giving us a more realistic view of something. However, for cylinders, they, no matter what way you look at a cylinder, it's going to be, or a sphere, it is going to be a sphere. So the size of the sphere does not change. So foreshortening something, so if you're looking at this, this is it perpendicular to the camera, this is it inclined a small bit, so it's going to appear shorter. That does not happen for a sphere, it stays the same size, because no matter what way you turn it, you're still seeing the distance from the center point out to the circumference as the full diameter. So we don't need to change the size of this, so it's going to stay as 12 millimeters. And when we draw on the ball, the circle, That is the um, sphere in the correct position. Just need to get rid of some of the backboard as it's gone into hidden detail now. But that completes the question for us. That is the 2014 higher level B2. So just recap there on part C of this. The sphere 
doesn't change size no matter what way you turn it, whatever way you look at it, it's still going to be a sphere. So that means it's going to have the same radius, you don't have foreshortening with spheres. So the radius 12 millimeters here is going to, that's here, is going to stay as 12 millimeters down here. You do not adjust it. You're not asked to draw the ball uh, the sphere up here, but if you want to, you can. It's just going to be a circle.